Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. First thing first, I want to point out that this May marks our channel's 7th year anniversary. To celebrate, starting from the week of May 7th, I will be uploading twice a week for 3 weeks. This will bring you all the exciting content you have been waiting for. Today, I will be sharing my latest video game pickups from February to April. With over 10 fantastic titles to show off, you don't want to miss this one. Additionally, we need to talk about my progress on Tamus Play PS4 games of 2023. Without further ado, let's get started. I want to start with the game I finished already, which is Bug Snacks. This is the first PS5 game offered as part of the PS Plus free games. I finished it early this year. I have to say it's a truly unique adventure game with interesting and creative gameplay. However, I found the replay value to be somewhat limited, which was a bit disappointing. I didn't realize there is a physical release of this game. Since the PS Plus version is only available for PS5, I've been on the hunt for the PS4 version, partly because I would like to stack trophies. Unfortunately, the game seems to be sold out everywhere. Therefore, I need to go to my secret place to order it. It cost me $20, which is acceptable, considering the rarity of finding a physical copy these days. Next, let's talk about Hotel Transylvania 3 Monsters Overboard, which I mentioned in Let's Force Pickups video. After some searching, I finally found a copy for only $13. Unlike Scary Tale Adventures, which is a 3D platform game, Monster Overboard plays more like the Pikmin series. The game has received mixed reviews, with some criticizing the controls and calling it a Pikmin ripoff, while others enjoy the unique gameplay style. In my opinion, this is a typical fan service game that will likely appeal more to fans of the Hotel Transylvania franchise. Next up is Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, a writing game that caught my attention because of its low price of only $8. I must admit that I'm not the best at writing games, and will probably struggle to get the Platinum Trophy. Nonetheless, I couldn't resist the bargain. The game has received generally positive reviews for its fun gameplay, which features characters from the Kingdom Hearts franchise. It's especially enjoyable for fans of the series. Now let's talk about Nintendo Switch exclusive game. Shadowverse Champions Battle is an excellent game for anyone who enjoys RPG card games. It's a challenge game that requires both strategy and luck. Lately I've been focused on growing my Switch library. I'm always on the lookout for new and affordable Switch exclusive titles, and I usually buy them whenever I find a land. Shadowverse Champions Battle was a great find. At only $14, it's definitely worth the price. Moving on to is the quest of Excalibur, Pudufu. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what type of game it is. This game didn't catch much attention. It's just one of those strange games I want to add into my collection. I had been keeping an eye on it for a while and eventually snagged a copy for $14.50. As suspected, the price started to drop soon after I received it. It was available for less than $10. It almost feels like the retailers were waiting for me to purchase it before dropping the price. Therefore, if you manage to get this game for less than $10, you are welcome. Alright, let's take a look at a couple digital games I purchased back in February. The first is 36 Fragments of Me 9. It's a cheap 2D platform game that only costs 30 cents. You also get the Vita version due to cross buy. As the game title suggests, the player needs to collect 36 fragments in the game. While it's certainly an easy play now, some level of skills is still required. I recall that when this game first came out, many trophy hunters thought this kinda easy PC would run the trophy community. However, compared to the countless shovelware clogging up the PS Store today, 36 Fragment of Mina is actually pretty good. At least it's still a game. Not just some garbage designed solely to sell you a quick and easy play now in less than 20 minutes. The next game I purchased was actually a DLC for Portal Knights, Cole, Elves, Grogs, and Rifts. It's the only DLC that comes with trophies and was 40% off in February, costing only $6. 
I hadn't seen the DLC on sale for a while, so I decided to take advantage of the offer. However, as many of you know, every time I think I got a good deal, the price drops even further. Sure enough, the DLC went on a 50% discount in March. If you manage to get the DLC at this discounted price, you are welcome again. I recall that Portal Knights was part of the free games for PS Plus a few years ago. Then they released this DLC with trophies afterwards. I personally think this is a shady move. Well, they got me this time. I will be more cautious and avoid this developer in the future. We are halfway down. Next is a point and click adventure game, Willy Morgan and the Curse of Bone Town. I bought it directly from the publisher. At just $5 with free shipping, it's definitely a steal. Although I'm not a huge fan of point and click adventure games, I couldn't resist this one when I heard that it comes with an easy play now. Back in March, there was a sweet deal where you could buy one get a second 50% off. I bought a couple of $20 games, and after the discount, they were $15 each. The first one is My Little Pony, A Mare Time Bay Adventure. This is an adventure game based on the TV series. I've heard that the game is pretty short, and comes with an easy play now. That's the only reason I bought it. I'm not 100% sure if the PS4 disc offers a free PS5 upgrade. I guess we will find out once I do the unboxing. I recently had a friend tell me to give JoJo's Bizarre Adventure a try. The cheapest one I can find is this JoJo Siwa Worldwide Party. I thought it was some kind of real person spin-off. It turns out JoJo Siwa has nothing to do with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Honestly, I don't even know who she is. Somehow, it reminds me of the infamous Hannah Montana the movie on PS3. Anyway, at least this game comes with an easy play now. Actually, too easy play now since there is a free PS5 upgrade. Be aware, this game is not a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure spin-off. Next is the most expensive game I bought this time. It's a Lacomosa of Dana Deluxe Edition. I recall when this game first came out on PS4, it was sold out faster than free pizza at a college dorm, and it wasn't restocked until recent years. This is one of the JRPG I really want to play. It's $40, which is the same price as the PS4 version. In this case, definitely pick a PS5 version since it includes all the DLC. If you are wondering, the PS4 version doesn't offer a free PS5 upgrade. I have been looking to get some of those rare JRPG lately. Even if they are pricey, I will buy them as long as they are cheaper than importing from Taiwan. Alright, last but not least, DC Lee of Super Pets. I have already finished this game on Xbox since it was part of Game Pass. This is a shooting game based on a movie. Obviously, this is a fan service game, so there isn't much to expect in terms of gameplay. But hey, at least it's an easy play now. Price wise, I paid $15 for it which is a reasonable price. Those are all the games I have purchased in the last 3 months, 10 physical games and 2 digital contents. Generally, there are not many great deals during this time of year, therefore I have slowed down a little bit. This is actually good news, since I can focus on clearing my huge backlog. It's like a spring cleaning, but for video games. Overall, I'm quite pleased with the outcome, because I was able to acquire some hard to find games, including one that I really wanted. Next, let's check my progress on 10 PS4 games I must play in 2023. I finished a couple games recently. The first one is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Where to start? This game is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you are going to get. 13 Sentinels is a visual novel with an RTS element. The game's story is so complex that I am pretty sure I need a PhD in quantum mechanics to understand it. There are 13 characters with themes of time travel between the future and the past. While the game has many surprising moments, it can be easy to get lost in the story. Not to mention, reading Japanese name translated into English is enough to make anyone dizzy. The RTS element adds some flavor to the gameplay. 13 Sentinels is a good game but it fails to simplify a complex story. As someone who plays a visual novel every year, this is hands down my least favorite one in the past 3 years. Even after completing the game, I'm still not entirely sure what's going on. 13 Sentinels, 
more like 13 confused individuals. The second game I finished is Carto. This is actually my second time completing this game. Carto is a fantastic puzzle game. The puzzles in the game are creative and challenging, but not too hard. Even if you are not an expert in puzzles, you will still enjoy this game. While there are some missable trophies, don't worry, you can use chapter select to go back to get them. Overall, I highly recommend this game to anyone looking for a fun and engaging puzzle experience. So far, we have finished 4 games already. The next game I'm going to tackle is LA Noir. This game also contains 5 DLC packs which will take some time to complete it. I expect to finish it before the end of June. We are close to the end of this video. Friendly reminder to celebrate our channel's 7th year anniversary. Starting from the week of May 7th, I will be uploading twice a week for 3 weeks. Also, during the summer this year, I plan to do 3 uploads every 2 weeks. We probably will start from the late June to early August. There is a ton of exciting content coming your way, so stay tuned. If you like today's content, be sure to smash that subscribe button below. Take care and see you soon.